This is Money Made Simple, the financial podcast that keeps it simple and gets to the point. Kia ora everyone and welcome back to Money Made Simple brought to you by Simplicity. Morning Jenny. Good morning Liv. So last week we went into a bit of detail around what we consider as bad debt, which in a nutshell is the kind of debt that you take on to purchase stuff that depreciates or doesn't earn you any kind of income or returns over the long term. So this could include borrowing money for things like your clothes and makeup, holidays, all of that kind of fun stuff, often via high interest loans like credit cards, personal loans, or buy now, pay later products. Yes, but as we mentioned, all debt is not necessarily created equal. Absolutely not. So you could probably put it on a bit of a continuum with high interest personal loans from payday lenders right at the bottom. Right at the yucky evil bottom, in our (laughs) opinion. Yes, and in the upper end, which we often refer to as good debt, we have things like borrowing for education or using a mortgage to buy your own home. Yes, and the reason we term these as good debt is that although you're borrowing money and usually paying interest on things like education or housing, they are likely to actually improve your financial standing in the long run. Make sense? Makes sense. Cool. So let's go into a little bit more detail around why these two particular types of debt could be considered good. Should we start with education? Yeah, for sure. As the head of comms and education, I'm very interested in education. It's also something that our uh, managing director, Sam, is very passionate about. He has a whole chapter in his book, Money Made Simple, around why education is such a good investment. Many people just don't understand how much education actually pays off over their lifetime. No, I reckon they definitely don't. And it doesn't just mean a university degree right it's apprenticeships vocational training all other types of particularly post-secondary education Mm, mm. um, will generally lead to more choice and a better job and longer term a better wealth standing right as we always go on about your financial freedom or financial standing Um, do you think though that this is just an opinion or like kind of bias from tertiary providers or is it actually proven that tertiary education as a whole actually leads to better outcomes overall? There are absolutely stats out there to show that it does. So when economists analyse the best investments one can make, many come back to education. There's actually links that have been shown between how many years of study you've done, whatever you've chosen... Mm-hmm. To, to study and how well you're paid. So in, in the book, actually, Sam refers to a bit of research that was done in 2020 by Universities New Zealand that showed on average a university degree is worth just under $1.3 million in extra lifetime earnings compared to going straight out into the workforce after school. Yeah, and of course, I mean, given that that came out of Universities New Zealand, that might be slightly uh, some natural bias in the research educational providers are going to want to show that it's good but it just illustrates the point that there is worth in education and the more education that you have the more you're probably going to be able to earn in the long run. Yeah of course there's more worth in education and lots of sort of social emotional intellectual yeah, uh, not even just salary, indicators right? yeah. but we, we're talking about the, the money here and obviously some of the highest paying professions like surgeons, lawyers and bankers, oh, bankers. <laughs> all tend to require hefty degrees but research by Sweet Analytics which is a Kiwi research firm showed that the gap between salaries via university and other industry training organisations or ITOs ITOs, as you like to call them such as apprenticeships and building or plumbing for Mm -hmm. example in terms of cumulative earnings over time is actually narrowing right so a doctor versus a tradie is getting a little bit closer together why do you think that is so the median annual income of trade apprentices has continued to increase with time relative to those with university degrees. And that's actually a really good thing for future generations, right? Like given how expensive a lot of university degrees tend to be, it means that if you are really worried about getting into debt, you know, your your family can't necessarily on paper afford you going to university and that's a really scary thing to then get into debt of say 50 grand for your university. There are actually Absolutely viable options for non-university training, so ITOs like we talked about, taking on an apprenticeship, for example, which could put you into a really good stead for your financial future. Yeah, there's lots of um, examples of where you're not only not getting into debt mm. to study, but you may be getting paid. You're earning money. Well, that's, earning that's money. an apprenticeship, right? I mean, it seems like crap pay, but you're also learning on the job. So Absolutely. Win-win. So. University debt has actually got a lot more palatable now too right. um, compared to what it used to be thanks to the introduction of interest-free student loans which 
stay this way unless you leave the country. When I was at university, she says, back in the good old stick, days, <laughs> um, we all paid interest on our student loans while we were studying. Oh, I can't even imagine. Compounding interest while we were studying. That doesn't seem fair, does I it? No, it's really unfair. That's, which is why they changed it. They've changed it. Now it's interest-free while you're studying, but also while you're working in New Zealand. Um, mm. And, of course, you only need to start repaying it automatically when it starts coming out of your salary mm. once you're earning over a certain amount. So yeah. it's not going to break the bank. It's at a point where you can afford to do it. It's kind of decided for you how much of it comes out of your salary, right? So at that kind of affordable level. So anyway, let's move on to the other type of debt – that we often consider good here in New Zealand, and that is mortgage debt. So the debt that you take out in order to own your own home. Yes. I mean, New Zealand's set up for home ownership. Absolutely. Uh, what, what does Sam say? It's something like we are basically a nation of property with an economy tacked on rather than the other way around. Yes, it's most people's biggest investment and what a lot of people rely on in retirement. We're mm, definitely mm. geared up. It's our nest egg. Yes, and we're convinced from a very young age it's the Kiwi dream yes. to own the home with the, the backyard. So, I mean, yeah, it's obviously the Kiwi dream. But there are also some inherent tax-related advantages to investing in a home as well, right? Yeah, the, the tax regime that we're operating in is really geared towards homeowners. So you probably heard in the news lately that there's been lots of talk about capital gains tax and the possibility of introducing one or not. But we don't have one at the moment and we don't have stamp duty. So this makes us different to lots of other countries like the UK and Australia. So it is beneficial to own your own home. And after student loans, it's the cheapest type of debt that you can get, right? So compare mortgage rates even at their current level. Which is scary, right? They feel scary, but, you know, they've been much higher. We've mm. just got mm. used to them being very low. And if you compare them to those of credit cards, so, you know, we talk about that being between sort of 18 and 20% mm. or personal loans, which are going to be least at, at more than least 10, but 10 percent huge sometimes in any consumer debt in last week's episode we were talking about buy now pay later and higher purchase arrears so the the cost of that sort of debt mortgage debt is probably you know it's many times cheaper than than these even though it's big amounts yeah and and to add to this is a fact that a home is just about the only thing that you can own and actually enjoy while its value increases over the long term. So it's an appreciating asset. Yeah, but having somewhere to live, hopefully somewhere warm and dry, is actually a basic human need. Uh, and being able to buy your own home satisfies that need. Although, of course, it does come at a cost with things like insurance, maintenance, rates, alongside your interest costs. Yeah, yeah. And um, back to the appreciating asset thing, there may be some exceptions here, like, you know, people will argue that you can invest in certain cars or artwork, but that takes a lot of skill and or luck, in my opinion, to punt on. And over the long term, and I do emphasise the long term here because we all know what's been happening to the housing market recently, the trend is that house prices in New Zealand are nearly always going up. So obviously we've seen those short term dips around the country. But in saying that, the average house price in New Zealand has still doubled in value over the last decade, according to Real Estate Institution of New Zealand data. Meaning that owning a house in New Zealand is a great way to increase your wealth. Mm. And in fact, your net worth, something that we talked about a few episodes ago, it's also a financial asset that you can improve and add value to yourself. Should you wish to Should do you so, wish right? to. Yeah. I'm lucky enough to be married to a builder. Oh. And that is definitely something that we will look to do in the of long course. term. No, it's, it's really common in that Kiwi psyche, right? You know, we're all used to DIYing our houses to some level, I think, whether that be like little like us or a lot bigger like you guys with a, with a lucky builder in the family to try and add value. Um, in fact, my hubby and I have actually spent the last however many really fun weekends painting bloody doors and door frames in our house. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole it's lot of value adds, including painting, recarpeting. Um, landscaping. Yeah. That can be enjoyable. Sometimes. <laughs> as well as a good uh, financial yeah. Yeah. So decision as well. How about so, so what about your home ownership journey, Jenny? Let's kind of talk about how, how we've kind of, you know, purchased. We're both homeowners, just full transparency here. Um, yeah, how did you end up originally buying your own home? Because I think we have quite different stories, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have bought our first home a little later 
in life. And luckily for us, we've bought it in the most expensive (laughs) city in New Zealand in one of the most expensive countries in the world. At one of the most expensive times to buy? Yes, I think so. So some great decision making there. But no regrets, right? No regrets, no, Hmm. and it is a long-term purchase for us. This Mm -hmm. is a home that we see ourselves raising a family in, and like I said, build a husband, we'll we'll look to add some value, but it's like you said before, it's it's an asset that you can enjoy, Mm. and it will be our home, while it also hopefully over the long term increases in value, and in a... In the spirit of full disclosure, we did have some help from parents to get into our first home. Hmm. I think that that's really, really common for Kiwis, right? Yes. Increasingly so too, I think. Well, it's required with how... Things get you know, more difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, probably caveat that houses have obviously got a lot more expensive relative to salaries than what they were, say, 10, 20 years ago. So we've both bought houses in in that time where it is a lot more expensive and to be fair I also got help from my parents which I'm really really grateful for so my husband and I bought our first house oh about five years ago now we thought it was the peak of the market but turns out there's many peaks in a housing market cycle and so similar similar to Jenny here ours is not our forever home um, we you know we we bought what we felt that we could afford because I've got a slightly different um, approach and For us, I knew that we wanted to buy investment properties because that's something that I'm doing to kind of be able to retire sooner and and grow our net worth over the long term. So we kind of bought Not A Forever Home and then two years later bought our first investment property. So that was back a couple of years ago during COVID. So used equity to purchase that first investment property, didn't have more cash lying around, but so really highly leveraged at the moment. But yeah, it's kind of all part of that journey that we're both on at the moment. And in New Zealand, home ownership is something that over time is considered a fairly solid investment. So Interestingly, there's been quite a lot in the media lately about the cost of rent versus the cost of mortgages Mm -hmm. and whether home ownership is always the best um, financial decision to make. And we will absolutely do an episode in the future about other long-term investment strategies where Mm -hmm. buying a house isn't possible. Yes. Um, because it's not possible for everybody. Yeah. Yep. And and with the current higher interest rates than we've been seeing over the last few years, I notice, you know, for us with having just refixed our mortgage on an investment property, rents nowhere near match that interest that you pay, even at interest only. Um, so, so it doesn't make sense unless you are able to cover the difference between your uh, mortgage interest and your loan. So... Yeah, it's, it's all very personal to everyone. Absolutely. So, yeah, we can consider both borrowing for education and to get into your own home a kind of positive debt or good debt. Mm. But let's remember it's still debt and paying it off as fast as you can will help you pay less interest over time and help you avoid the impact of compounding debt. Yes, particularly with the yeah. home loan example, paying it off quicker can make a really big difference. So There are some great calculators around. Lots of banks have them. I'm sure sorted would of course they where do, you can favorite. take a debt and look at how much it will cost Increasing you if, your you, repayments. Yeah, if yeah. you pay it over 10 years 20 years 30 years you know and what that looks like in terms of those yes. weekly payments so absolutely recommend looking mm. at it and whether you can pay off and this goes for all debt faster over a shorter period of time and you'll pay less for it yes I think run. one other little hack which is is not that commonly known as Increasing the frequency of your payments, so paying something off fortnightly versus monthly, actually makes quite a difference in the long run. You get a few extra payments in every year, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. On the other hand, student loan debt, probably less of a priority to try and pay off really aggressively while it's not accruing interest. So you can stick to those minimum automatic payments that get taken out of your wages or salary. It can be good for you mentally to get it paid off earlier if you wish and you have the means to, but that would only be if you don't have other high priority debts to pay, like we talked about in the last episode, which will cost you a lot more money in the long run. Yes, yeah, so if you've got your list of debts, uh, interest-free student loan would be at the bottom Absolutely. in terms of working through that. Yeah. So there we have it. All debt is not created equal. Basically, it can be okay and sometimes a good thing to borrow when you're confident that the result of that borrowing will help you work towards better choices. So that then gives you more dignity and a higher net worth, etc. So both education and home ownership have the potential to do so. 
But other types of debt which don't help you financially or over the long term are of course best avoided where possible. Awesome. Thanks, Liv. So that's the good debt, bad debt. Part one and part two (laughs) debate. Next week, we're going to be chatting about something that's kind of related to today's topic, but also quite different. We're going to discuss mortgages from a functional point of view. Oh, exciting. For you, Hmm? for sure. Hmm. (laughs) How they work, the reasons you get them, who offers them, and the different types. So we look forward to chatting next week. Chatting next week. Bye. See you. This podcast contains personal opinions and is intended to provide educational information only. It doesn't relate to your particular financial situation or goals and is not financial advice or recommendations. Simplicity New Zealand Limited is the issuer of the Simplicity KiwiSaver Scheme and Investment Funds. For product disclosure statements, please visit Simplicity's website, simplicity.kiwi.